Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about dates. In particular, we're going to be talking about the events described in Daniel and chapter 12. Now, if you've been around our channel for any length of time, you know that we have been talking about the year 2020 since about March or April. It seems as though Daniel and chapter 12 is pointing to the year 2020 when it comes to the events described in Daniel in chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. Now I did a recent poll trying to get some help with what would be the name of this event that is described in Daniel in chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. Is this the third temple being opened up or New Jerusalem coming down here to earth or could this be the return of the Elijah spirit? About 13% of the people who answered the poll said that it could be the return of the Elijah spirit, while about 35% said that it could be the rapture. And it could very well be that mid-tribulation rapture event that we are waiting for, but the majority of the people answered that this event would be the Great Awakening. I would answer that it is all of them wrapped up in the same event. Even the start of the Great Tribulation, as you understand from the books of Revelation, that it seems like the Great Awakening starts the Great Tribulation. But anyway, what we're going to do in this class is we're going to go down through and we're going to show you a recent revelation that the Father has given us concerning the actual date of this event in 2020. Even though we've put out several classes, maybe a dozen classes on the year 2020, I never was willing to commit to a certain date this event would take place. I believe that it was our father who didn't give me any significant confidence that these events would take place, even though everybody else was thinking that it would occur around Pentecost or the 10th day of all or the day of the memorial blowing the trumpets or atonement day or tabernacles. But one thing you notice as we've gone, even though I've had 99.9% .9 confidence that this event would happen in the year 2020 when all of those dates pass I didn't jump on those other bandwagons as people started to say and point to dates like Halloween and Thanksgiving for you guys who are on watch for the rapture you've probably witnessed several channels that were saying that you were going to have a rapture on Halloween or a rapture on Thanksgiving. That didn't make biblical sense to me. That's why I didn't bother even mention that in my videos. Also notice that I don't teach astronomy on my channel. You know all of the people talking about convergences and star alignments and all of that stuff that they can only see with high speed computer programs. That's not what I teach on this channel. Even though I aced astronomy at Auburn University when I was getting my Master of Science degree, I don't mess around with that stuff when it comes to my ministry because I'm not an astronomy or an astrology teacher. I am a Bible teacher. And so for me to share something with you, I have to wait for our Father to reveal the scripture to back up what I'm going to say or I just don't say it. But in this class, we're going to see how the scripture is not only pointing to the year 2020, but is actually pointing to an exact date in the year 2020. So let's jump over and let's take a quick look at the scriptures that we're talking about. It starts here in Daniel and chapter 12, verse 1. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book and of course is talking about the book of life here so like i said i did a poll but what do you guys think this event is that he's talking about here in these first three verses the return of the Elijah spirit is what we see right there in the first part of verse 1 when it says that Michael shall stand up. We've done several classes on the Elijah spirit and in the recent classes we've done, 
we talked about the relationship between Elijah, which you read about in Malachi and chapter 3, and this Michael that will stand up. It seems as though they are the same angels, the same spirit. But notice that in this part of the verse that he's actually standing up. So this would actually be the return of the Elijah spirit. But then notice after that it says, And there shall be a time of trouble, such as was since there was not a nation even to that same time. So this is talking about the beginning of the tribulation. And this seems to be the pattern all over scripture is whatever this event that's described in Daniel in chapter 12, Revelations chapter 8, Matthew in chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 12, all over the, the scripture. Even 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 all seem to indicate that whatever this event is will precede the tribulation. It almost seems like it is the start of the tribulation or it starts the tribulation. Then it says, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found in the book of life. Here you are looking at the poll results and I think everybody tends to agree that this event could be the great awakening, the mid-tribulation rapture, as well as the return of the Elijah spirit. And like John Matthew put down in the comment section, that it is the start of the great tribulation. But uh, like I said, what do you guys think? Because you're talking about at that time that people shall be delivered. What do you call that? That deliverance of everyone that is found written in the book. But anyway, let's go on. Verse 2 says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, being aware of the third testament of the Bible, we could give it another name, and that's the hour of the conscious. You see that mentioned in chapter 55 of the third testament of the Bible. Verse 29 says, But the hour of the conscious approaches. It is the same as if you would say that the day of the Lord or his judgment is about to take place. Then shame will arise in some and remorse in others. That's what this verse is saying when it says some will awake to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. But look at verse three. It is says, and they that be wise shall shine as the righteousness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And of course, in this translation of the Bible, wise means those who are obeying the covenant. It is at this time, whatever this event is, those that are keeping the covenant will start to shine. As the Bible says, they will become the head and not the tail during this event. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. That's what Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19 was talking about when it says... But whosoever shall do and teach them, talking about the law, shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So that could very well be another name to describe these events as the beginning of the kingdom of heaven. And those that are wise, meaning those who keep the covenant or keep the law, which is Exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7, will shine as the brightness of the firmament during that time. And those that go on and teach that righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. But now if you go down through the following verses in Daniel and chapter 12, you see in verse 4 how it says, and knowledge will increase. This again is pointing to the great awakening. And down in verse 10, it says, many shall be purified and made white. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. This seems to be pointing to the beginning of the tribulation. So again, I ask, what do you think this is? Is it all of this what we're talking about? If you would, please put it in the comment section of this video. But what we want to focus in in this video is when these events are going to take place. And for that, we have to jump down to verse 11 
where this man clothed in linen is given Daniel the timeline. We saw in verse 7 that he was telling him when all of these events would be finished. And we've covered this in another class. This times, time, and half a time, how it points to the year 2027. But when you jump down to verse 11, it's talking about the beginning of these events. So let's look closely at this right quick. Verse 11 says, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Now, I've been searching all over the scripture to find when this event took place. But none of those scriptures gave me any confidence. And that's why up until this point, I haven't been willing to say with any assurity when these events would take place in the year 2020. I've always been sure about the date 2020, but I've never been sure about the exact month or day until yesterday which was the Sabbath day and knowing from Ezekiel chapter 46 and 1 that the gate of the court of our temple is opened on the Sabbath day I decided to spend some time with the Lord praying and meditating on this subject and sure enough he rewarded my efforts and showed me scripture that had otherwise been hidden from me so let's look back at verse 11 it says, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So what this is saying in between the time span between the daily sacrifice being taken away and the abomination of desolation set up would be this one thousand two hundred and ninety days. And this is how we came up with the year 2020. You're looking at a time chart of human history, which spans all the way back from the creation of Adam until the presidency of Barack Obama and all of the rulers of the world that has came since, including Nebuchadnezzar. We can see that they're stating that the 70 years of captivity started in the year 606 BC. That's pointing to the time in which Nebuchadnezzar came into Jerusalem and took the daily sacrifice. But now the scripture that our father has recently decided to show me was over here in Daniel in chapter 1. It's a little bit surprising that I was able to look over this scripture and not realize what it was saying all of these many months. But I do understand that our father reveals things to us when he sees fit and not necessarily when we see fit. So let's take a look at it. Verse 1 says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. So this is talking about what we saw in that image over there of when Nebuchadnezzar came in and sacked Jerusalem. Up until this point, I was only able to use historical records to point to the year 606. But I'm not a history teacher. And in fact, I only made B's in history in college. And that added to my lack of confidence in pointing to an exact date because I couldn't prove biblically that this all transpired in the year 606. And the internet was no help because there is a lot of debate on when that exile period, that 70 years of exile started. Some say 597 and other dates. While other websites confirm that it was the 606 date. But let's look at verse 2. It says, And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with the part of the vessels of the house of the Lord, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. So in this verse, we see that the daily sacrifice is being taken away. Those gold and silver utensils that was used to make the sacrifice every day was taken into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. But we look back at verse 1 
is saying that this occurred in the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim. Now here is a document I created as I was trying to figure out the Jubilee years and the sabbatical years. What I did was went in and looked at the historical accounts of all of the births of the patriarchs from Adam all the way down to the time of the kings and even down to when Nebuchadnezzar came in and sacked Jerusalem. Our Bible is so precise and so accurate that you can look and add up the years from Adam to Jehoiakim. And you see here where I give the verses from which all of this information comes from. So really quickly, what you find in Genesis is all of the dates of the births of the patriarchs from the creation of Adam all the way down to Abraham. And then you're able to scripturally prove the dates of the covenant and the exodus and even the creation of the first temple using other books like Exodus, First Kings, and the book of Jubilees and then from Second Chronicles you're able to f understand the reign of the kings from Solomon all the way down to Jehoiakim who is the subject of this verse and until the father showed me the relationship between the first verse in the book of Daniel and the last verses in the book of Daniel I was a little bit confused because it seems as though nothing significant had taken place in the year 606. But when you look closely, you see that Jehoiakim took the reign in the year 609 BC. Again, you can prove that by way of the scripture and a calculator that he actually started his reign in 609 BC. So when you come back to uh, Daniel chapter 1 verse 1, you see that Nebuchadnezzar took the vessels of the house of God and carried them into the land of Shinar in the third year of Jehoiakim. So that's where they get the 606 from. And for the first time, I'm able to prove that biblically. So whereas before I said that I was 99% sure that we were talking about the year 2020. Well, I guess now I'm 99.99% sure. You say, well, how do we get 2020 out of that? Well, let's jump back over and let's look at Daniel in chapter 12 once again. Because what this is pointing to is the time in which the daily sacrifice is taken away. And what it's telling us is from the time that the daily sacrifice was taken away until the time of the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days or 1,290 years. So if we start off with the year 606 BC or negative 606 and add 1,290 years, remembering to add one year because there's no such thing as a year zero, we end up in the year 685. So what Daniel is telling us is that the abomination that maketh desolate will be set up in the year 685. So and if you're wondering where's the other time that you remember hearing about the abomination of desolation that's over in Matthew in chapter 24 verses 15 says and when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whosoever readeth let him understand then let them which is in Judea flee unto the mountains. So what is this abomination of desolation that was supposed to come in 685? Now there's a lot of confusion about this verse because of the whole scenario surrounding the Antichrist and how some people want to teach that the Antichrist will be the abomination of desolation as he stands in the third temple and claims to be God. But look at this verse very closely. It doesn't say that a man is going to be standing in the holy place. It says that the abomination of desolation will stand in the holy place. 
And when you come back over to Daniel in chapter 12, it says that the abomination that maketh desolate set up. So this is not talking about a man. It's talking about something set up in the holy place. I guess it's easy for anybody to understand that the holy place that he's talking about is the Temple Mount where Solomon's temple once stood. Well, what was set up there in the year 685? It was the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock is the abomination of desolation that was set up on the Temple Mount or the Holy Place in the year 685. It is an abomination because it is a thing that causes disgust or hatred. The Dome of the Rock is a temple built by the Catholic Church to a different God. And we know that it was built by the Romans because of the dome that is on the top. Muslims don't build structures with domes on them. Romans do. The desolation part comes in because the place was deserted of people, meaning that all of the Israelites were forced out of Jerusalem during that time. It was made desolate of the people and is still yet desolate of the Israelites to this day as they're not welcome in that part of the world. Even to this day, anybody claiming to be Israel is not allowed on the Temple Mount. Only Muslims are allowed on the Temple Mount. So it is desolate of the Israelites. So this is what Daniel was talking about when he was pointing to the year 685 in verse 11. At the end of that 1,290 days or 1,290 years. So that takes us to 685, but then look at verse 12. It says, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. 1,335 years. So if you come back to our calculator and add 1,335 years to the year 685, you guessed it. Of course, we come to the year 2020. So, Let's try to understand when is the month and when is the day of this so-called blessing that we are supposed to get in the year 2020. Again, what we're told is that it's supposed to be 1,290 years plus 1,335 years from the date that Nebuchadnezzar took the daily sacrifice out of the house of the Lord. So when was that? What month and what day did that occur? For that, we have to jump over to Ezekiel and chapter 24 and verse 1 to understand when that actually took place. Of course, Ezekiel was one of the first people to be captured and taken into Jerusalem. And we see right here in verses 1 and 2 that he's telling us the exact month and the exact day that all of that occurred. Verse 1 says, Again in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me. So this is Haggai, who's now captured and in Babylon, receiving the word of the Lord on the tenth day of the tenth month. And it's saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the day. Even this same day, the king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. This is telling us that Nebuchadnezzar took the daily sacrifice away in the 10th day of the 10th month. So for the first time, this ministry is able to say with any confidence that we know the exact start of the 1,290 days. And therefore, we are able to state with some level of confidence when those 1,335 days will be up. It would be on the 10th day of the 10th month in the year 2020. Now, of course, we're talking about lunar months on the sacred calendar or what some people call the Enoch calendar. So what date are we talking about? Now here is a list of the months on the Hebrew calendar or the sacred calendar. The first month is Nisan. 
In some texts you'll see it called a beeb, but that month falls sometime between the middle of March and the middle of April every year. Well, if you count down to the 10th month, you see Tibet, which is called Tibet in the book of Esther. In chapter 2 and verse 16, when it's talking about her marriage to King Ahasuerus. Now, you should find that quite interesting how that marriage between Esther and the king took place in the 10th month. It doesn't tell us which day it happened, but it could very well be pointing to that great marriage supper occurring in the 10th month. But we'll cover that in another class. In this one, we're talking about the month Tibet and how it falls between December and January. It actually starts with the new moon that you'll find between December and January. So when was the new moon of December of 2020? For that information, we could jump over to a website called truthofyahweh.org which allows people from all over the world to come in and report when they laid eyes on that sliver of the new moon. We can see that it was reported in Arizona, California, Florida, Kentucky, Mexico, and Michigan on the 15th of December. So that evening of the 15th of December was the beginning of the first day of Tibet or Tibet. There's about 20 people, even in Texas and Virginia, who consistently reported seeing that sliver of the moon on the evening of the 15th. So if the new moon was spotted on the evening of the 15th, that made the full day of Tibet 1 on the 16th. But anyway, you see that Ezekiel in chapter 24 was telling us that the daily sacrifice was taken away in the 10th day of the 10th month. So when is that? If the first day of the month started on the evening of the 15th and lasted through the evening of the 16th of December, the 10th day of the 10th month will begin on the evening of December the 24th and will last through December the 25th. In other words, we're expecting those events that were prophesied in Daniel and chapter 12 to occur the evening of or the day of that holiday we know as Christmas. Now, I could see a correlation between this and what Isaiah was talking about over there in chapter 14 and verse 8. He says, Yeah, the fir tree rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Meaning they're going to stop cutting down these fir trees and these cedar trees. This is talking about Christmas trees and the end of cutting down Christmas trees. I find it very interesting that he's talking about the end of Christmas trees when you look at verse 3 and how it's talking about a rest from thy sorrow. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Which seems like all of that that we was hearing about over in Daniel in chapter 12. And then he's down here talking about the end of the Christmas tree. Is this all pointing to the day of the Lord? I don't think so. Because when you come over to Malachi in chapter 4 and verse 5. It's telling us how the Elijah spirit will return before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Verse 3 is talking about how he's treading down the wicked, which we've heard about over and over in this video. But verse 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This, I believe, is what he's talking about over in Daniel in chapter 12 when it says, At that time, Michael shall stand up. Michael and Elijah are the same angels. So on Christmas Eve, those who are wise... Those who are keeping the law could expect the gift of the Elijah spirit. But anyway, we just got this revelation from the Lord yesterday. 
and so we wanted to hurry up and get this video out because we really only try to put out one video a day and we got a lot to cover and we don't have that many days left until December the 25th so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you have that bell notification button pushed so you can see when these classes come out in the meantime check our channel as we have done many many classes on the Elijah spirit and the third temple and look for a playlist at the end of this video on classes from the Shepherd of Hermes when this all goes down you'll want to have that information from the book called the Shepherd of Hermes which you can find a link to in the description of this video along with a link to the third testament of the Bible if you got something out of this video go ahead and hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button but leave us a comment either way and shalom